you need to take Social Security early. Yeah, you heard me right. As a financial advisor, I'm telling you, you need to take your Social Security early. And I'm going to go through a specific example on the board at the end of this video. So make sure you hang on to the end on why you need to take Social Security early. Now, most experts, if you read Forbes or if you look at any kind of financial websites, they're going to tell you, take Social Security at 67, take Social Security at 70, get a bigger benefit. But does that fit you individually and your family? Maybe, maybe not. And that's what we need to talk about today on the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. Now, you understand that if you take Social Security at 67, if you were born after the year 1960 and you take Social Security at 67, you're going to receive 100% of your full retirement benefit. But if you wait until 70, you're going to get 124% of your full retirement benefit. I call these broccoli eaters overachievers. Now, if you take Social Security at 62, you're going to get 70% of your full retirement benefit. So you can take Social Security anytime between ages 62 and 70. After 70, it doesn't make sense to wait to claim. So you might as well take it if you're 70. Now, the question becomes, should I take Social Security early? Most individuals today will retire at 64 years old. That's the average retirement age today. And most individuals will take Social Security when they retire. Is that the best decision for them? Again, we're going to go through that on the board to give you a very specific example. But let's talk about three reasons why you would want to take Social Security early. All right, the first reason why you'd want to take Social Security early is to fund your wants, not your needs. Maybe you retire at 62 and your need income, meaning your utilities, your TV bill, your taxes, your insurance, all of that retirement income is covered from your retirement investments. So you take Social Security early to cover your wants, your vacation, purchase of a car, funding a college, maybe a wedding, or you have a mortgage. And when you go into retirement, you use your Social Security to cover your mortgage. So you're covering your wants, not your needs. Again, we're gonna go through a specific example on the board covering exactly what we're talking about. Now, the second reason why people take Social Security early is to cover the bills for declining health. 35% of individuals today retire early because of a chronic or a declining health situation. And 38% of individuals have to retire early because they're taking care of a spouse who has declining health or a chronic health issue. And so a lot of individuals will take Social Security early to help cover the cost of the medical needs when it comes to retirement. Now that might not be Medicare, it could be health insurance, it could be assisted living care, it could be having a nurse come in the house, but a lot of times individuals will take Social Security early to cover the cost of health care. Health care cost is outrageous. It's going up by 7% every year. That's health care inflation. Not inflation that the Fed talks about, I'm talking about health care inflation. And you and I know how much health care costs today. And so we've got to be prepared for higher health care costs. That's why we do a financial EKG. And if you want to get together with us to do that, all the information is below. But we want to make sure that we are covered when it comes to all of our retirement expenses, especially health care. All right. The third reason why you want to take Social Security early is to fund a cash flow shortfall. Now, what do I mean by a cash flow shortfall? When you retire, you will not get a paycheck anymore. Now, you might be a blessed person and you might get a pension, right? You might have worked for the military, the government, a company that still offers a pension. But nine times out of 10, you will not get a pension in retirement. So all of your retirement expenses are going to need to be funded by your retirement investment accounts. Maybe that's a 401k, an IRA, a brokerage account, a Roth IRA, whatever that might be, your retirement expenses need to be covered by some form of retirement money. Let's say you retire at 62 and let's say you need $3,000 a month to live off of. Well, if your portfolio 
can't sustain in the long term a $3,000 distribution plus inflation, maybe you take Social Security early in order to bridge the gap or to lessen the amount of money that has to come out or be distributed from your retirement investing accounts. That's why a lot of people take, or take Social Security early when they retire early to help fund the gap in their retirement expense need. Now, let's go to the board and let's do a specific example of why you should take Social Security early. All right, let's go through a detailed analysis. Should I claim Social Security benefits at 62 or should I claim Social Security benefits at 67? Which one is going to be better for me? That's what I want to look at today. I want to go through a strategy of claiming Social Security at 67, okay? And I want to look at a strategy of claiming Social Security at 62. And I want to look at 82 years old, how much money is left in our retirement investing account. So we can get a dollar by dollar exact, precise examination of what does it make sense to do. Take Social Security at 62 or take Social Security at 67. I want to start with the 67 scenario first and then I want to go to the 62 scenario second because I think you might be surprised at what you're going to find. So try not to look over here, okay? Just look right here. So we've got $550,000 saved for retirement. We've got this in both scenarios. We're going to retire at 60 years old. We're going to do that in both scenarios. We're going to start with an income need of $3,575 a month. We're going to do that in both scenarios. We're going to try to keep this exact as possible so we can get an accurate reading on should I claim Social Security at 62? Should I claim Social Security at 67? Obviously, you can claim at any age between 62 and 70. If you claim at 62, you're going to get 70% of your full retirement benefit. If you wait until 67 or your full retirement age, you're going to get 100% of your full retirement benefit. And if you wait till 70, you get 124% of your full retirement benefit. It's an 8% increase between 67 and 70 on the amount that you would get paid. So we're gonna factor all of that in into our analysis. Now, the rate of return on our 500,000 is 4%. 500,000 of this is, in, is invested in the market, 50's in the bank. We're using a geometric return of 4%. Now, I realize that bank money might not earn 4% forever. We're not looking at it as the bank's earning four, the market's earning four. We're just looking at a geometric, conservative allocation projection of 4%. Now, our expenses or the income that we need to live in retirement is going to increase with inflation by 3%. Okay? Now, I understand that inflation could be hot and heavy at different times. So you could go into retirement and inflation could be six, seven, eight percent. Or you could go into retirement and inflation could be one, two, three percent. I call that reverse sequence of return risk. Now, if you understand sequence of return risk, it, a sequence of return risk is essentially you go into retirement, the stock market goes down, the money that you're pulling out of your retirement investments for in income is going down at the same time you're pulling it out to live off of. That's sequence of return risk, right? You retire, the market goes down within the first couple years of your retirement. Reverse sequence of return risk for me is that we go into retirement and inflation is high, meaning we're having to pull more money than anticipated from our retirement investments. Doesn't really matter what the market's doing, going up or down, we're having to pull more out. That's called, for me, that's called reverse sequence of return risk. And we are going to calculate in just 3%. But when we do the software, when we go into the Your Financial EKG and do an accurate software for a client, we look at heavy inflation right at the beginning. And then we even that out over time. So 3575 is what we need from our retirement investments. From age 60 to 67, we take out the 3575 per month with inflation. We get a 4% rate of return and our money goes from 550,000 to 312,127 in retirement investments. So that's 60 to 67, that's 7 years right? Now, at 67, our expenses have gone to 4,099. You see that? 3,575, 4,099. That's 3% inflation. Our social security's kicking in now. That's 2950. 
That's 100% of our full retirement benefit. So we're just assuming our Social Security is going to be right under $3,000. Now, keep in mind, if your Social Security at 60 is $2,950, the projection at 67, I understand that there is a COLA increase on your Social Security payment even when you're not taking Social Security, right? So at 67, it would be higher than $2,950 than what you're projecting at 60. But I don't want to do that. I'm a conservative financial advisor. I want to be projecting this to be conservative. Okay, now I know people are going to comment, you didn't give Social Security a call increase, whatever. That's fine. I'm being conservative because I want to protect my clients, right? We want to get to retirement, we want to get through retirement, and we want to protect our ability to stay in retirement. I want to protect our ability to stay in retirement. Just like if you go to the doctor and he says, hey, John, your cholesterol is higher than it needs to be. You probably should take a statin or eat a healthier diet or exercise more because if you don't, you could have a heart attack. Now, you might live to your 100 and eat hamburgers and steaks and whatever and never have a heart attack. But the doctor is being a fiduciary or whatever they call it in the doctor's world. And he's saying, hey, you need to do this to protect yourself. It's the same thing I'm doing. I want to protect you when we're building out our plans. So at 67, we've got $4,099 in expenses. Social Security is $2,950, which means we need $1,149 from our investments. So from 67 to 77, we're pulling out about $1,200 a month. We got a 4% rate of return, 3% inflation. Our 312 goes to 264, 632 in retirement investing accounts at 77. Okay, now this is only investing accounts. This doesn't include a home or rental properties or your collection of baseball cards or whatever. This is just spendable investments. Okay, now at 77, we've got 264,000. Our expenses have gone to 5,085. So you see that in 17 years, from 60 to 77, we've gone up $1,500 a month in what we need to pull out of our retirement investments. Social Security has also gone up to 3,806, which means essentially at 77 years old, we need about $1,280 per month to live off of from our retirement investing accounts. At 82, we have $219,879. Now I'm gonna stop at 82 because I wanna do 82 over here on taking Social Security at 62. So we have 219,879 at 82 claiming Social Security at 67, starting with 550,000 in retirement investments. Take a snapshot of that, pause the video, take a picture of that, because we're getting ready to look at 62. Did you take a picture? Okay, now, here's what I want you to know as well. At 100, okay, at 100 years old, there's like, let me see, what's the number on here? At 100, there's $83,000 left on this side. Okay, so from 82 to 100, at the end at 100, there's $83,000. Pretty good scenario. Taking Social Security at 63, or at 67, $83,000 left. That's not, that's not bad. I like that scenario. Pretty good scenario. Now, let's look at taking Social Security at 62 and why in this scenario, I might advise the client to take Social Security early instead of waiting. You ready? Okay. So, at 62, our Social Security is 2065 okay? That's 70% of the full retirement benefit of $2,950. We've got the same amount of assets saved, $550,000 saved for retirement. Remember, we're retiring at 60, so there's no extra work, no part-time work, 60 years old. The money that we need out of our investments, $3,575. It's the same for both at 60, okay? From 60 to 62, we have to take out $3,575 from this $550 that's earning 4%, and there's 3% inflation on that. So we go from $550 to $555.27. Okay, so we, we go up about $527. Do you see that? We take this out, and in two years, we've got that. Okay? Simple, easy. Okay, now at 62, we're taking Social Security. So we take Social Security early. That's 2065. There's our Social Security. Our expenses have gone to $3,712. So we've gone up about 200 bucks. We need $1,647 from our 555.27. So what we're trying to do there is bridge the gap. 
We want to not. We want to stop taking so much money out of our investments. Hey, a lot of times I'll talk to clients and we'll do projections on their year financial EKG, and maybe they're retiring at 55 or retiring at 60 or retiring at 57, whatever. And I'll show them from age 55 until 67. Listen, this is about 12 years of income that's going to have to come out of your retirement investing accounts. We don't know what the market's gonna do over the next 12 years. Now, I can look at history, we can look at projections, we can even be really conservative on our projections, but we honestly don't know what the world or the market's gonna look like. And so it might be a audible at 62. You might say, I'm gonna retire at 55 and I'm gonna wait till 67 to take Social Security. You might get to 62, 63 and the market might just be in shambles. And you might go, Omaha, Omaha, right? We're gonna audible out of this scenario and we're gonna take Social Security at 62 or 63 to help bridge the gap that we need for retirement income because the worst thing you want to do, I don't want you to have to go back to work. And so don't let market fluctuations and don't let planning pigeonhole you into like, I got to do this. I only can do this. No, these are flexible. You want to be flexible in your planning. Okay. Namaste, right? Be flexible. Yoga. I don't know. I don't do yoga. Is that what people say? So at 62, we take Social Security of 2065. We need $1,647. 62 to 72, we go from 550 to 441. Now our expenses have gone to 4,522. Our Social Security is increased to 2,664. So we need about 1888 from the 441,000 we have saved for retirement. At 82, 72 to 82, we have 278,292. I want you to see this now. Let's compare the two numbers. At 82, claiming Social Security at 62, we have 278,292. At 82 over here, we've got 219,879. That's a big difference, right? In this scenario, we took Social Security early. We got that money from the government early. We got to use the money that we paid into early. Over here, we delayed. Now, here's the thing I want you to think about too. If I keep running this scenario out, there's zero dollars at 91. So the question becomes now is, are there other assets to sustain this? Like, is there a house? Is there rental property? Is there an inheritance? Are there collectibles that are gonna be sold and are gonna fluctuate into this plan? Because in this plan, we're out of money at 91. And you might say, hey, Drew, average life expectancy for a male, depending on the survey that you read, is between 80 and 85, let's say. So this is a pretty good scenario. Take my money early, I'm probably not gonna to live to 91. Over here, maybe you have longevity in your family. Maybe you're like grandma lived to 100 and daddy lived to 97 and I need a plan to live to my 90s. And so in that case, we're like, hey, it looks good at 82, but the longer you run it out, it actually is better to wait and claim Social Security at 67. That's why I am a firm believer in claiming Social Security when it makes sense for you. It's not about claiming at 67 or claiming at 62 or waiting till 70. Everybody's different. This is a single person example. What if you're married? What if you have a spouse who didn't work and they have spousal benefits and you need to get the best Social Security benefit for them? Then yeah, we're talking about delaying. What if you're retiring early because of a chronic health issue and we need money to pay for that issue? We're claiming Social Security early. So it's done based on your individual scenario, not what you read in a book, not what's in some magazine or some news article. It's based on you. And that's what we do here at Your Financial EKG. We base our financial planning on you. It's not about me. It's not about what some CFP article says or what some market watch or CNBC says, it's about you, your needs, and your individual lifestyle. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.